the engine room sequence was um, very involved. You know, today nobody thinks twice about you know shooting against a green screen and having it all you know digitally added later. But at that time, it was difficult to do digital stuff, so a lot of it was done with the models, and we'd do motion control matching and a bunch of complicated things. We did some research, and there was this Liberty ship, the Jeremiah O'Brien, which is an old World War II vessel that had triple expansion reciprocating engines, basically like a one-third scale version of the Titanic's engines. So we had some model makers to build one-third scale lights and catwalks, and then we treated it as basically a model shoot. We went into this Liberty ship, we lit it with miniature light bulbs, and we had catwalks, and then we photographed at a slightly faster film rate to sort of give it a little bit more mass. One of the things I learned from Jim is the key is never do the same trick twice. Just when you think, ah, they're doing it with motion control and a background, you change it, and now it's a real engine room, you know, with the Jeremiah O'Brien with its one-third scale engines moving around, and you cut to another shot, and, you know, it's a green screen foreground with a background of the model. If you always mix the techniques up, you're bound for a much better success than relying on one technique for the entire film.